Here's the thing about power. Once you taste it, there's no going back. Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Haynes, Senior Editor of Video Games at Common Sense Media, and I'm here today with a quick look at Outriders. It's a game that came out on April 1st for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, Google Stadia, and Windows PC. It's a third-person action role-playing game that can be played cooperatively with up to three people in multiplayer, or you can always lone wolf it and go solo across the surface of the planet Enoch. Now, a quick note for parents and for kids, this is a mature action game. Combat is the focus of the title itself, so you're going to see a lot of blood and gore in these scenes. We've tried to cut down some of it, not only to spare you some of the plot so that you can uncover what the story happens to be yourself, but also to steer away from some of the bloodier or more violent scenes as well. One other note is that we've also tried to cut back on some of the mature profanity in the clips, but some of it is unavoidable. There is quite a lot of it within the game, so that is something to pay attention to. We'll go over some of this in a little bit later detail in, this, in a later part of this uh, video. So what is our Writers. Well, as you can see at the very start of the video, uh, Earth is dead, and humanity is essentially taken to the stars to try to uh, still remain uh, alive and, and not extinct. We set off two capital ships, and only one of them managed to make it to Enoch, which happens to be this planet that we found very, very far away after 83 years in space. So you wind up taking on the role of an outrider, who is essentially uh, a lawkeeper, a scout, and a mercenary kind of rolled into one. You've been sent to the planet along with an expeditionary force not only to find the probes that you sent to the planet to see exactly what kind of data that they could gather and collect about the surface of the Earth, uh, or, or the surface of this planet, but also to understand exactly what the hum remnants of humanity will be running into when they land. Unfortunately, while it looks very lush and verdant and idyllic, Enoch is anything but. In fact, you're going to discover very quickly that there are these really strange things along with some of the creatures that happen to be on the planet known as anomaly storms, which happen to really kind of affect everything around them. And they just seem to be getting much, much worse at random points in time. In fact, as you can see right here, you and your force get kind of stuck in uh, an anomaly storm shortly after landing. And the effects are really destructive and brutal. In fact, uh, you have to basically run for your life from one of these storms and as well as some of the people on your team not everybody winds up making it out many people get ripped apart other people get severely injured in fact you in trying to help one of your teammates winds up uh, being so affected and so injured that the survivors on your your crew basically put you back into cryostasis until they can figure out not only what the anomalies happen to be but also just how injured and affected you happen to have been by uh, being affected by the storm unfortunately you wind up waking up 31 years after uh, the initial landing to a war-torn planet. The remnants of humanity have descended into civil war and chaos, and you essentially have a few jobs. One, to try to reestablish some semblance of law and order and peace. Two, to figure out if there's some way of stopping the violence between the last factions of humanity before everybody is essentially wiped out. And three, to understand what exactly happens be going on on the planet Enoch, what the anomaly storms happen to be, and if there is a way of escaping the planet itself, or figuring out a way of tamping down these storms. There are four different classes of player that you can play when you uh, step into Outriders. You can choose to be a Devastator, who is a kind of a tank-based, close quarters uh, character that uses a lot of seismic abilities to uh, destroy their, their opponents. You can be a Trickster, which uses a lot of temporal abilities. It's a very fast-based uh, uh, class where you run in, do a lot of uh, attacks, slow down time so that your enemies can't really focus on you, and then get out before they can really land a blow. You can play as a Pyromancer, which is a mid-range character that uses a lot of fire abilities and explosions to cause a lot of uh, mid-range damage. Or you can take on this role for this video where we chose the Technomancer. It's a long-range uh, character that's really best for people that are playing solo uh, missions, and they, they do a lot more damage from a distance. They also use a lot of gear to uh, cause their... their uh, their strikes. 
every class has one of has eight different abilities that they'll wind up unlocking over the course of of gameplay. For instance, uh, the Technomancer has this rocket launcher ability that they can use to cause a lot of damage over over a period or over an area. They can also throw out uh, turrets like the one that I have right there, which is shooting up bullets that can freeze enemies, like you can see in a second, so that you or the members of your party can then uh, concentrate your your firepower on on those targets. You can also throw out grenades. You can uh, eventually wind up poisoning uh, your bullets or doing other very, very impressive uh, effects. And you can then, over time, customize and tailor uh, those effects as well. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Outriders is a very violent game. And as you can see right there, using that grenade, we managed to propel an enemy over the ramparts uh, of, of the, the location that we happen to be in. For example, uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of gore, uh, there's going to be a lot of mature language, there are also some scenes, especially back at the base, where your character may uh, have some some sexual uh, inter interaction with a sex worker, as well as a comment on, on certain things that are of a sexual nature. And there are also some scenes where some characters are just drinking. If you happen to have any other questions about some of the mature content that you'll find within the game of Outriders, you can always check out our review at commonsensemedia.org where we break down every single possible uh, concerning point for parents and for kids on the website in the written review. Now let's get back to the gameplay itself. So right here we happen to be in a side mission and this side mission is involving a character that we wound up uh, encountering shortly after we were uh, awakened from awoken from cryostasis and it's this uh, really sadistic person calling themselves a captain who has a certain amount of abilities from the anomaly and from the anomalous storms and they've taken up residence in this uh, ruined base where they can launch raids on some of the refugees and some of the other places around the planet, but they can also uh, conduct strikes on some of the the uh, armies that happen to really be trying to scratch out uh, existence and, and kind of their own uh, foothold on the planet. So we're going to face off against them, kind of being a, a law keeper as we are taking on that role of an outrider. Of course, uh, he happens to have his own bodyguards around him, so he really thinks that he's in a really good position. Of course, we happen to have uh, the the ability to really cause a lot of havoc ourselves, and as you can see right here, it's going to be a little bit different than a lot of uh, shooters or action role-playing games that you might see in this kind of vein. For instance, a lot of those games really kind of emphasize staying in cover, taking out enemies if you see them, and basically uh, being very cautious. Outriders, on the other hand, because you don't have any health packs or healing items, you really have to stay on the offensive to heal your character or the characters in your party if you're playing a multiplayer. So you have to gauge exactly what your enemies happen to be uh, doing, where they happen to be, and then using the class-based uh, abilities of your character to heal yourself from any damage and counter the abilities that you may be facing off against. Now, of course, this guy happens to be using a lot of flame tornadoes, but as a technomancer that has the ability of freezing, we really have a really good place to counter a lot of the options that he has. In fact, throwing out that uh, that turret that can freeze opponents as well as using our melee ability to freeze enemies gives us a step up on all of the people here and we can counter a lot of their attacks then using some of the grenades to uh, eliminate the target right there. Of course, you can also tailor the skills and the abilities of a particular class to fit your playstyle. So, for instance, the Technomancer really is a long-range based character class, but if you want to do a little bit more mid-range uh, abilities, again, as I mentioned earlier, you can focus in on the Decay ability, adding a little bit more poison to your bullets or a little bit more uh, damage. In fact, one of the other abilities gives you the option to choose between using a rocket launcher or a minigun so you can wade into battle causing a lot of damage and then walk away dropping possibly a turret or a grenade to cover your retreat as you wind up escaping back towards cover and healing yourself as every single attack that you land uh, causes damage on your enemies. 
So we're coming up on the very end of this video, but I want to show you one really quick look, which is basically what it would be like to have an altered villain or a boss battle against you as an outrider, as an altered hero. Of course, the anomaly affected many of the creatures on the planet, so you're going to be facing off against some altered creatures or altered alien beasts, but you'll also face off against uh, some of the humans who, for lack of a better term, have really kind of embraced their darker nature and have been mutated by the anomalous storms. This one, Gauss, has not only some kind of telekinetic ability, but he also has some kind of electrical powers as well, which you possibly may have heard from Jakob uh, mentioning some of his abilities as you were climbing the stairs to face off against uh, this, op this opponent. Of course, we happen to have our own abilities too, so it's going to be somewhat more of a fair fight. He's going to be trying to throw out, uh, trying to throw out some mines and, and trying to flush us towards certain areas where he can cause a lot of damage and we're going to basically try to do the exact same thing. Of course, as a solo uh, venture against this boss, it's going to be a little bit more of a pitched battle. If you happen to have a multiplayer, it would be one of those circumstances where you would try to uh, have somebody fix their attention uh, while you and, and your friend basically flanked your enemy and tried to cause a lot more damage. But there's also something else to bring up. For instance, at the top of the screen, you'll see uh, this level count, which is telling you what your your level happens to be, giving you a sense of how much more it, it'll take as you eliminate enemies before you gain new abilities, new skills, and, and you become more powerful. Right underneath that is the world tier level, and that's basically the difficulty for the game. There are multiple difficulty levels or world tiers that set up not only how, how strong the enemies happen to be, how quickly their abilities happen to refresh if they happen to be altered, um, how much damage they do, how much health they have, but it also gives you uh, the added advantage of affecting the loot drops that you happen to get when you're playing the game. So. If you find that the, the difficulty is a little bit too easy, you can always raise the level to something that you feel is appropriate, and you can do this at any point in time. Of course, if you wind up uh, running into an enemy that you simply can't defeat, you can always drop it down a little bit and then raise it back up at the end of that encounter, but it gives a lot more flexibility to you and the members of your party to see exactly uh, what you want to uh, test your, your skills at. Um, of course, right now, we're, we're not doing too badly on this particular world tier level of four. This is, of course, one of the, the sections at the very beginning of the level. So as a solo, we're, we're actually doing pretty well. We've taken him down to about half of his health and our abilities are freezing him in place so we can do a lot more damage, giving us a chance to go, go a little bit farther along within the story, understand what's been happening, and hopefully put a stop to all of the actions that are going on on the planet of Enoch. So that's a really quick look at Outriders. Again, like I said, it's a game that came out on April 1st, 2021. For top picks and advice to fit your family, be sure to always check out our website over at commonsensemedia.org.